Welcome back to 1834 Restoration House. This is episode five. And in this episode, I'm gonna show you some more pictures of things we've done around the house. Um, a lot of people have been asking for updates and whatever happened to this and whatever happened to that. And so in this episode, I'd like to cover some of those things that we've done in greater detail. Here's a picture of the wallpaper. Um, I've never really showed that close up, but I thought you might enjoy this. This is actually um, a raised print uh, wallpaper. Uh, it could possibly be block print um, from the looks of it. I'm not quite positive, but it definitely has a raised relief to it when you touch it. You can feel the ink. We wanted to paint the living room and the music room and the dining room uh, because everything was just so ratty looking and it felt dirty and it was a kind of an off-white color and there were shadows and there were pictures of being hung on the walls and everything just looked just kind of nasty. We went down to our local Benjamin Moore store and I asked them for the cleanest, brightest, purest white, plaster white paint that they had. And they set me up with one that they called Chantilly Lace. And we started by painting all of the walls the white color. It really turned out nice. It brightens up the room and gets rid of that kind of icky, you know, 30 year old um, paint look that it used to have before and just really cleans it up. And it's closer to what plaster would look like. We went ahead and, and dug into the historical catalog that Benjamin Moore has to offer. And they have historic colors that are based on real samples of early American paint jobs. And so we found this really lovely color here. And what we did is uh, we took it and made it a couple of shades. We have a, a, a base shade and then there's a one shade darker that we use there. So uh, let me go ahead and show you another picture. This here is uh, looking through the living room into the dining room through the double doors there. I don't know if you can see it, but the paint is two-toned. So the doors are painted one shade darker than the trim. This here is the uh, what we call the music room. My wife came up with that one. Um, maybe uh, it would be more appropriate if there was a piano in there or something, but uh, it does have a nice bay window. And again, we have the two-tone green. Uh, it's very subtle, but it's there for sure. We painted those huge double doors in that same scheme, the dark paint uh, followed by the lighter trim. And here is looking out the front bay windows. She found some really nice curtains and put those up. They, they didn't cost much, but it really dresses up the windows nicely. Here's a view of the fireplace. This is kind of, I guess they call this a powder room or maybe a half bath that's off the kitchen. It really looked bad when we moved in here because it was two or three different colors and it was pretty ratty looking. So we went ahead and painted that as well and put up a nice mirror there. Here's a view looking into the dining room. And we carried that same color scheme all the way through the first floor of the house, uh, even into the kitchen. Here's another view of the uh, music room. Here's another view of the fireplace. We left the fireplace the color beige. Uh, that was what everything was painted. It was all a flat, single color paint job back uh, when we got it. but. Uh, we didn't want to mess with the intricacy of the fireplace at this point in time, so we went ahead and just left that color like it was. Uh, if you remember from the uh, earlier walkthrough, the section above the fireplace was all cracked, and it looked like there may have been a hole there at some point that was patched over. So I went ahead and replastered that and got that all looking sharp, and then we painted it. Uh, here's another picture of the dining room. And you can see the two-tone paint on the doorway. When we did the work down in the basement, we ended up chipping out all of the old mortar that was rotten. And we also chipped out the 20th century mortar, which was made of Portland cement. And uh, there were some pretty deep cavities in there that were left behind. And some previous owners in the past had stuffed socks into holes that had uh, crumbled out. We also found insulation and uh, somebody even attempted spray foam at one point. So we ripped all of that out, got down to to where we had either nothing or or solid original lime mortar. 
Then we went ahead and put the new lime mortar that we made, put that in there, and you can see this and how that turned out in this photo. And then the next thing we did once that was done is we did a lime wash on the entire wall. And I don't think we talked about that in our videos, but what we did is we took lime powder and we mixed it with water and made it kind of a like a like a milky kind of a substance. And then we brushed it on with a mason brush. We did about six coats. And with each coat, it started to build up a little more and a little more. And pretty soon we had this beautiful white finish on there. So it's not paint. Uh, paint will chip off eventually and fail. But this stuff won't fail. It basically turns into a, a plaster coat, which, uh, as we explained in an earlier video, is simply um, limestone. And that finish will last for a long, long time. But the neat thing is it allows the, the wall to breathe. So if any moisture comes through the wall, it's going to breathe right through that. And we've actually seen that happen um, when uh, when water gets down in, uh, you know, in the rainy season and starts to come through a little bit, you can see the wall kind of get a little discolored from letting the moisture through. As soon as the moisture dries up, it goes right back to white. So I have a couple of more photos that I found since the last video showing the machinery. This is right after we got the dust collector, and you can see it there in the corner. Uh, it's a cyclone type dust collector, and it works really, really good. Um, here I am unboxing some of the machinery. I think that is the, the jointer there. And behind that is the stand that the jointer sits on. In this photo, you can see the jointer in action. So I'm putting a board through there, and what the jointer does without getting too technical, is it, it flattens a board. So whatever surface you put through there comes out completely flat, and that gives you a reference plane that you can use to uh, further machine the wood uh, for whatever it is you need. In our case, it was floorboards. And speaking of floors, this is a shot of the upstairs floors. Uh, now, the paint had been worn down so badly from years and years of foot traffic, we went ahead and cleaned it, mopped it, and then we put down uh, a brand new enamel finish coat on the floor. It's a kind of a dark brown, and uh, we like it a lot. It, uh, it makes the floor disappear underfoot. And the great thing is it's washable. You can mop it. It won't hurt it a bit. So up here in the northern country where we live, uh, we, we tend to get a lot of snow in the winter. And here's a shot out the door. Uh, I think this was taken last year. Here's a shot of the front yard right after we moved in. There used to be these really badly overgrown shrubs that went along the front of the property and they completely obscured the house from the street and they were overgrown into the sidewalk and people couldn't get by very well. And when it snowed, it was even worse because it would weigh them down and basically block the sidewalk. And so everybody was always, why don't you cut those things out? So one day we rented a excavator and a neighbor and I attacked it and we tore those things out and got them completely gone. And here's the finished result. It really opens up the landscape a bit. Um, it allows the house to be seen from the street, which is nice. And it uh, gives us a better view out. And now the stairs. So when we got the house, the stair treads were completely worn through from years of people walking up and down the stairs and having grit on their shoes and dirt. And where it was worn through was, was dirty. It was kind of a gray color. And so we decided after all that work, we can't let the house sit here with bad stairs, right? So what we did is sanded off the section that was worn through, got down to clean wood, and then started building the, the finish back up with orange shellac. And that's all we did here is just orange shellac. And that restored the color and made it look really nice. And in addition to that, we, we painted out that, that beige color that somebody had painted on there years ago. We used a dark brown color, and we did the, uh, the base trim there as well. Um, at some point in the future, it would be nice to take that down to a, to a natural wood finish, but for now, it's just going to have to be paint. And here's another view from the back. So that's really all there is in the update here. Uh, I just wanted to share that with you, and I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next video.